Hello, my name is Eve. Thank you so much for joining me here today and happy February 2020. For any further information on the services and the products that I offer, my website and my Instagram information is below. Any lectures that I've recently done for purchase are below as well. Any meditations that are on discount. And then I did record a free meditation that I highly recommend you click on and download. It's to assist you in bringing in all of the sacred numerology and the divine codes for this year of 2020. In this video today, I am focusing in on the planet Venus and Mars because these two planets are involved with what is going on in the world in terms of love and the pathway of romance. And as we well know, February is when we have Valentine's Day. There is always a very heavy focus on romance and love in this month. I'm going to be looking at the numerology for the month, the Tarot messages, and as I said, also talking about the planet Venus and Mars. Stay tuned as well for in the next couple days, I will be posting my full moon in Leo as well. The month of February is a number two, and two is ruled by the energy of the moon. The moon is in rulership in the sign of Cancer. It is on its throne in the sign of Taurus. The moon is very comfortable also in the sign of Pisces, and it's considered well-placed in the sign of Sagittarius. So when we're looking at the month of February, we're diving deep into the energies of our emotional body. Two is the number of harmony, of romance, of working with our emotional body. Two is also the number that deals with family, whether it's our own birth family that we came from and any family dynamics going on there. And if we are creating our own family at this time, and maybe any things that might, anything that might pop up if you have children. So kind of looking to what's going on within the family dynamic throughout the month of February. And remember, it is a two vibration, which is ruled by the divine feminine and specifically divine mother energy. Very beautifully guided here in terms of our emotional body. That means it's time to listen deeply to your heart and to your intuitive body as well. Now let's add the month to the year. 2020 is a four. And when we add two to four, we have six. Now, isn't that beautiful? Six is ruled by Venus and in the Tarot, it is the lovers. Therefore, we have the divine mother energy through the moon and cancer. And in the Tarot, two is the high priestess, which also is that very Cancerian lunar energy guiding us through. February this year in particular then has a double entendre is the word I'm getting. And I don't ever use that word. I'm not quite sure what that means. You may want to look it up. Antandra speaks to union, a connection of some form. This month of February 2020, then, we are looking at the most significant connections in our life. We have the moon guiding us, and we have Venus. She is the goddess of love. She is the goddess of plenty, of prosperity, of creativity, and of personal beauty and self-love. And the tarot card is the lovers, which brings in the sign of Gemini, whereas Venus rules the signs of Libra and Taurus. And I'm giving you the sign languages because you may have these signs, Cancer, Taurus, Gemini, Libra, Pisces. You may have them as a sun sign, a moon sign, rising, or your planets of love, Venus and Mars, may be, may be in those sign languages. And just kind of letting you know that these are the signs 
that have an extra flavor or energy going on throughout the month of February. Now the lovers along with the moon card for number two and six, these are numbers that speak to harmony, bringing harmony into our lives, bringing balance in if you've been off balance for a while. If you feel like your life is pretty balanced, it's looking at what is the next level of harmony and peace and comfort that we want to restore or bring into our life at this time. Because when we're looking at even numbers, especially number two and six, and we're in a four year, so this month we have three even numbers. Even numbers speak to building security, having stability, setting goals, and two speaks to the heart, Four speaks to laying solid foundations and building our financial well-being. And then six speaks to love and romance. All of these energies are blending very, very beautifully this month. Now let's dive in a little bit deeper. And I'd like to see how the month of February began and how it's going to complete. So on February 1st, 2020, the number is seven. Seven is the chariot, which is ruled by the sign of cancer. Again, we have a water theme, a little bit of a water and air theme, air theme that is predominating here. And of course, in the month of February, we go into it in the sign of Aquarius, which is an air sign, and we complete it in the sign of Pisces, which is a water sign. So we do have the influence there of the water and the air energy. Water is the emotional body and air is the mental intellectual body. So it's about blending our rational mind and our thought forms with our emotional body and our intuitions. How are we going to do that? And therein, therein lies the balance that we are seeking this month to balance out our heart and our minds together. Now the chariot is all about movement but it is divinely guided movement. And the tarot deck that I love to use, my Syrian tarot deck, the chariot is personified by Lord Krishna in his chariot, holding the reins to the five horses, which each represent one of our five senses. And the symbol of the chariot in that deck is about allow, allowing your soul, your higher self, your intuitive body, your observer self to come in and guide your physical senses, which can also be a representation of your material world. So the chariot, if I embody it from that specific tarot deck, which is the visual I'm being given here today, it's about bringing in to union or to greater working together, a deeper alliance between our spiritual and higher bodies and our physical world. We're wanting to work through them as one. Be aware though that it is Lord Krishna who has the reins of all of his senses. And the chariot is one of the major arcana cards just like the strength card is, where we're seeing immense power in the charioteer and in the strength card, we're seeing that through, um, in the one deck I like to use the strength card, we see Hercules wrestling with a lion, the Nemean lion in mythology. And both of those cards which follow one another, the seven and the eight, are about how to use our physical strength and our physical experiences in such a way where we where we are allowing our, our where we are allowing our higher mind and our wisdom our higher self to be our guiding pathway here so it's working together from a place of of great strength because when we allow all parts of ourselves, especially our spiritual self though, to take the reins in our life. We often find that every area of our lives does align better and the 
decisions we make within our physical environment can actually prosper more because we are working from that higher and that deeper guidance, which is being driven by the wisdom that we have attained through many experiences in our lifetime. It's also being guided by our emotions. We have to follow our happiness. And if you are in a position in your life right now where you're not happy and have not been for a while, whether it's in your love life, your home life, or your, or your career, it's time to take an inventory on that. Because everything is set up in this month of February with all of these even numbers to bring us to a place where we feel like we are moving forward with our lives and we are building upon it. We are improving our lives. And we start this month out with a chariot, which is always about forward movement. And we complete it on February 29th because we are in a leap year, which we get every four years. Again, a leap year. We are leaping forward this month. It's a very, very powerful month. And when I add the numbers together for 2, 29, and 4, I end up with an 8, which is the lion, the strength card. So with both the chariot and the strength, the forward movement that we are achieving this month or wanting to achieve, intending to achieve, is coming from a very deep inner place within us where we have built that inner resilience. We have built that inner courage and self-confidence and self-reliance. And I'm going to be speaking about this more as we go through the coming months because the planets Venus and Mars, both the goddess of love and the god of passion, which is Mars, are guiding us on this journey here. Now, the important dates that I want to bring in, where I was told are very powerful days in the month of February, aside from the first day of February and the last, which are February 1st and the 29th, we also had the 2nd of February. It was a 2-2-2020. It was another eight day. It was also a 44. It was a master number. This Sunday when we had the Super Bowl here in the U.S., the energy was electric on that day. Electric. People were in good moods. It wasn't just about the football season. There was a feeling in the air on that day. And that is because it was a master number. 44 rules the angelic realm. We were getting a lot of angelic guidance. A lot of spiritual messages were coming through. A lot of intuit, intuitive hits. I was dreaming very, very deeply that morning and later that night. So be aware, I really feel like the month of February is going to be a time of deep dreaming for many of us. Now, other significant days in this month are the day of the full moon, which is February 8th. And I will be going into that at greater length in my full moon video, which is coming after this one. That's also a powerhouse day. What's the numerology that day? It's a five, the Hierophant. But it goes across the eighth and the ninth. So it goes from the five to the six. So again, we're getting the lovers here. Another powerful day is actually tomorrow. It's February 5th. It's an 11 day. 11 days throughout the month are days of manifestation where you could be getting a lot of messages from divine source and from your higher self, deep intuitive guidances, but 11s also bring in clarity and movement. The 11 days this month are going to be February 5th. They're going to be February 11th, I mean, sorry, February 14th. And we have on February 11, the 11 energy in the day. So again, February 5th, February 11th, and February 14th, we have that 11 manifestation energy that's very, very powerful. The last 11 day of this month is going to be on the 23rd of February, and that is the new moon in Pisces. Very powerful, beautiful new moon. 
Now the other two days that are also very strong are February 22nd, 2020. We have 2-22-2020. Like February 2nd, we're getting that two vibration magnified. So be aware you're going to be getting a lot of electricity around you. There's a, energy is going to be moving on that day. And then the other powerful day this month is on February 27th because it reduces to a six. So that's another six day helping the lover's energy come in. But on that day, we also have the vibration of 33. So we've got 11 this month. We have 22. We just had 44 and we're getting 33. On the 27th of February, 33 is about miracles and magic being all around you. And it's specific to love and romance. So please pay attention. Now let's look at the planet Venus and Mars. Venus is entering the sign of Aries on February 7th, just as we're going into the full moon energy. She's in Pisces right now. The goddess of love as she goes into Aries, is taking us on a very, very profound journey of healing, releasing, and breaking through old wound patterns that we still carry around love, self-confidence, self-love, finances, and work. So those are the big themes here. Venus in Aries is about, and this is about the divine feminine energy. Regardless of gender, we all have the feminine and the masculine within us. So you're going to be working with your own divine feminine energy in terms of any kind of healing on the emotional level and financial level. With the Aries energy, you're building your self confidence here, you're building your self esteem, your moving towards having greater courage in expressing your emotional body and how you feel because Venus does rule love, but that can also show up as you charging more for your services or walking into the office and asking for a promotion because you know you darn well deserve it. There's going to be a lot of issues around finances and how we work with abundance and prosperity this month. Now, Venus in Aries is not only about self-confidence and courage. It's about recognizing that you have the strength to do it on your own. You don't have to rely on anyone else. Venus in Aries is I'm doing it on my own. I am putting my flag in the ground and I am embracing my freedom. Venus in Aries is all about personal freedom and personal empowerment. And she's going to be in Aries through March 4th. So be aware that that emotional part of you, that feminine part of you, is wanting to break free of any wound patterns around love, finances, abundance, and lack of self-confidence that lie there. Now, when we look at the planet Mars, Mars is in Sagittarius right now. It's been there since January 3rd. It's going to move in to the sign of Capricorn on February 16th, where it will remain through the end of March. Now, Mars is all about our vitality, our passion. What are we going to fight for? What are we really going to go after? So it's that drive, that vitality. And it's also our temperament. It rules our energy system. And being in the sign of Sagittarius, it means that that divine masculine part of who we are, regardless of gender, has been in a place of deep change, deep transition. And some of that transition could literally be in the physical world, moving from home to home, from city to city. Maybe some of you are crossing oceans. Perhaps some of you are just simply doing a lot of traveling. Sag Mars and Sagittarius can also be moving up the ladder in terms of your career or your job. 
But Mars and Sag is also about you aligning yourself with your inner truth. What resonates as divine truth for you? It's kind of nice right now that we have Venus getting ready to go into Aries. And so she will be in a fire sign for about a little over a week while Mars is in a fire sign as well. And while both of them are in a fire sign from February 7th through the 16th, we're going to see an alignment here where I find that many of us may be wanting to take a lot of action in our lives and move forward on, on a lot of things. We're going to have a lot of motivation guiding us here. And after that time, you know, Venus will stay in Aries and then Mars will go into Capricorn, but Mars is on its throne in Capricorn. So be aware, it's not really going to let up. What I do like about it, though, is now that the masculine part of us is realizing what it truly wants and it's going to go after it, once Mars goes into Capricorn, it's going to make it real. It's going to clean up any part of its act. It's going to build the foundation that is necessary to make its dreams come true. Okay, so Mars is going to be a while in Capricorn, about six weeks, building that foundation. It's going to be a very, very productive energy here. So that's the guidance we have in terms of love. A lot of beautiful messages coming through here. Now I would like to look at any messages that the cards want to give us today. And the decks I'm using here are The Whispers of Love by Angela Hartfield, The Romance Angels by Doreen Virtue, The Psychic Tarot for the Heart by John Holland, and finally The Lover's Path Tarot by Chris Waldhair. And the first... And I want to lay them out all together. I picked the whispers of love as what is our guidance? What are, what are the messages around our love life and our romantic life for the month of February? And then I want to read it as one theme here. And I got the, the romance angels as well to add to this. So these are the themes or the messages that we are all working on here. And as I pulled these, I realized I was going to be talking to several different scenarios here. So there's going to be, uh, it's almost as if you're being divided into groups of people, which makes sense because there's quite a number of people um, watching this video. So let's get all the messages here. Okay, beautiful. So from the whispers of love, be willing to express love. When we express love, we begin to receive more love. So I want to read the cards out all together because I'm getting a theme, especially in the first three. Be willing to express love. That means be open to expressing love. It's about taking action, not just thinking about it inside, but it, it's inviting you to enter a harmonious relationship with people of equal giving and receiving. This card speaks to the creating the energy or expanding upon the energy of giving and receiving mutually. See how she's looking at her what I would call maybe her higher self or her observer self there. It's kind of like she's having an inner talk with herself and she wants to express more of who she is here or more of who he is here. So there's an expression of love that's wanting to come forward here. And then right next to that, we, got, we have the card of forgiveness. Nothing can be gained by holding on to past disappointments. And I'm getting a lot of messages with this card. It's telling me that, and especially because from the Romance Angels, we got the card of separation. Time apart from your partner is either on the horizon, has been for a long time, or is occurring right now. Okay, so that's where it could fall into several different groups. 
forgiveness the way to heal anything and everything in our life is through understanding and compassion holding unforgiveness especially on ourselves that's the place we should always begin is working on forgiving ourselves because that's when we forgive ourselves we start bringing in more self-love and then when that self-love comes in our ability to see the situation or the other person or persons involved opens up and we can become more compassionate and understanding forgiveness is the answer here and i love it because in this visual you can see the masculine almost holding the feminine on his shoulder and this card is showing us that we are bringing into union within ourselves our masculine and feminine they are communicating and they are working on any issues around unforgiveness or anger or blame that are going on but past disappointments this can be telling you that this in this month of february because mercury is indeed going retrograde this month february 16th through march 9th and 10th let go of past disappointments in terms of love and romance because you want to move forward here and i like it because above it you can see them holding hands and above his head as this forgiveness comes in more and more the candle is lit for a new beginning here it's a beautiful beautiful card and it goes along with expressing your love it's time to really talk about this and the third card here is choose love you always has a have a choice and what i'm being told with this one is if you find yourself always talking about the same story over and over again where someone hurt you or this always happens to you and you keep going over it i'm here to let you know that the more we focus on the disappointments and the hurts and the rejections or the abandonments that we have we give it energy and we're not allowing ourselves to let it go choose love means stop talking about the pain over and over again so that you can finally heal it and release it if you're always looking backwards at your relationships you know what you're actually doing you're not looking forwards is it healthy to look backwards if there's still pain there that you haven't been able to fully move through absolutely and the way to do that is the answers right here express love but express love means talk about your feelings with a counselor with an intuitive with an energy healer with very close friends allow them to help you talk it through but then let it go don't keep bringing it up every time you talk to that friend be willing to let it go at the doorstep when you're done and then practice the forgiveness of it forgiving the situation forgiving what happened in the past and forgive yourself because nothing happens in a vacuum okay that means there's always two people or more involved in that relationship recognize what part you played in it and forgive yourself forgive everything that happened so that you can indeed move forward into that new beginning and when you choose love that means you're always going to be able to see it from a higher perspective because when you focus your mind on love you'll find that anger is no longer there in your heart it leaves and then the last card we got here which seems quite different from the first three i don't know why i'm putting these back down because they don't want to stay <laughs> is new love is coming in embrace this new opportunity of love that is here this may pertain to work opportunities or spiritual growth as well and what i'm getting overall here and with the romance angels we have separation give your relationship a chance keep an open mind and worth waiting for so what i'm getting is a couple different groups here the first one is those that have that are going through a separation 
You may, might be right in the middle of a separation or even a divorce right now or coming on to the other end of that divorce and you need to work on forgiveness and on not holding negative feelings around everything that happened. At the same time, it's also very, very important that you heal from this separation or divorce if that is actually what you are going through. For others, what I'm seeing is there's something going on in your relationship right now where you just don't feel like you're in the same frequency and you're feeling like you're not connecting as well, you're arguing, or you're just not seeing that much of each other. This could signify a literal separation where your divine partner is miles, hundreds of, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles away. Maybe they're in the military. Maybe they're overseas for a job for a month or two. And that is talking about a, a physical separation, which can also bring in feeling that lack of frequency. So please be willing to reach out to the one you love if there is indeed a physical separation or you're, you're in each other's world, but you're both very busy and you're not at the same frequency at this time, be willing to reach out and express love. Do just a beautiful act of kindness. Tell the other person how, you, how much you love them, that you miss not having heart-to-heart -heart conversations or that you haven't had intimate time or date time in a while, and then seek to find a beautiful time to bring that back in. Okay, so you need to talk about this is what I'm getting. And of course, next to this separation card, we got give your relationship a chance. So it is about bringing both of you back into alignment again. So some of you in separation, you are absolutely meant to part ways. Others, you're just going through a little bit of a dichotomy right now. You're disjointed in your relationship work on it, you're going to come back into that beautiful alignment. And then there's a third group of you here, and it's those that have been, there's a separation with someone that was a true love in your life. And you could be separated from this person going on many, many months, many, many years, or decades, or even lifetimes. This is a separation from a sacred beloved. And I think the reason this card came in this time in February is maybe that sacred beloved is coming into your life. They're either returning to your life and they're going to make you an offer. And this is telling you, give this relationship a chance, okay? Or they're going to come back into your life as a brand new love from another lifetime. That means you have not met them in this lifetime yet. The answer is always give this relationship a chance. And then we had here, keep an open mind and worth waiting for. Your soulmate, your sacred divine counterpart, they may differ from your usual type. More than anything, when I get this card though, I always get the message of just simply open your heart. And remember, one of the things that closes our heart down is when we hold unforgiveness and we're not able to work through it, right? So the more we can practice self-forgiveness and forgiveness of our relationship patterns, the more we can open up our mind and our heart. And what I'm getting with this card is you're going to be sitting down with this person and you're getting to know them, whether it's someone returning to your life or someone brand new, I'm being told, take the time to get to know them. Don't be in a rush. Give it time. Go out. Keep an open mind on how you meet them, where you meet them. That's the other thing. They could come into your life in a way that's very unexpected. And lastly, divine timing is at work. This love that's coming to you, this new love here, is worth waiting for because it is a sacred divine counterpart. Let's look at the extra messages here that I got from the tarot cards. The hermit, seek. For some of you, especially those of you that are going through this separation, 
based on distance or non-alignment or a literal separation or divorce, go into meditation, go out into nature, practice your, bring in your spiritual tools, practice yoga and meditation to find the answers that you seek. It's okay for you to take the month of February, at least the first part of it, as we're in the pre-shadow of Mercury right now, and close your eyes and go inward. Ask your divine guides, your higher self, to bring the answers to you. And when you do that, you're going to be able to come out and shine your light into the world again. That's the card of the sun. So when you go in inward into internal reflection, which always brings me back to that expressing your love, but knowing what that expression needs to be, working on forgiveness and, and trust issues, when you go inward on that journey of self-love and self-confidence, then you can come out and beam your light that new light that you found when you went inward. I'm kind of almost getting a message that for some it's about going through the first part of February, seeking answers and going inward. And as we get to the end of February, we're shining our light like a beam of light out into the world. And we're shining it into our relationships. We are a magnet for bringing in that new love. We are a magnet for bringing in the opportunities. And of course, what's the card that came behind the sun? The lovers. So when you go inward, you get clarity on what you're seeking. I think I'm going to just put these all together. When you go inward, you seek the answers. You seek internal balance and harmony. And you are in a place of deep inner peace. You can find your light again. You can shine it into your relationships, whether it's the relationship you're presently in, bringing someone back into your life if someone is returning. You may or may not know that. It could come as a surprise. Others are aware of it. Or you're bringing in new love. Love is the answer. This is a month of love. And the last card is the nine the nine of hearts. It's the nine of water. Dreams are coming true. Your dreams are coming true. I'm being told right now the cards I've pulled to look at it as a progression through the month of February. So the first week, the second week, the third week, and we complete February with bringing these dreams in. Doesn't mean all your dreams are going to just suddenly coalesce and be completely there at the end of February. But it does mean that they are indeed coming in. But it could be one small step at a time. Let's get the very last little extra bonus cards from the Lover's Path to Row. The Wheel of Fortune. Fortune is shining upon you. In this deck, this is about fortune. It's about the angels bringing you abundance, bringing you good fortune. They're also bringing you good news. Oh, I just got someone's getting pregnant or someone's finding out that they're pregnant. Someone may be having a second child. Okay, something around pregnancy and children here. And then the last message I'm getting is you're getting an offer or a law or a message from far away. Someone is coming towards you. And I think it's an offer that maybe you didn't expect because see, she's laying there with her guitar, doing her thing. So that's right there, Venus and Aries. She's doing her thing. She's building her self-love and self-confidence. And this beautiful message or guidance comes in. Eight of coins. Yeah, your hard work is paying off. off. You are building your foundation. This is a very, very good card about prosperous times are ahead. And I'm looking at it as prosperity in terms of finances and career, but also love. And let's look at the very last bonus card, the Nine of Coins. Oh my God, that is so beautiful because the Nine of Coins and the Nine of Cups are the two wish cards. 
in the tarot. Your wishes are coming true. Okay? I love it, love it, love it. Beautiful messages. Okay, I wish you all well. Until next time.